What's good, YouTube family? This is Brown Brother. Please like, share, subscribe before we get started. I greet each and every one of you all with peace, positivity, power, and so forth as we go on being melanated people in America. I've been doing this uh, um, Black 101, How to Be Black 101 series uh, uh, for a minute now. And although the title may sound stupid, not saying that I'm teaching you how to be uh, how to act black or whatever, which is, is crazy because there's no such definition or one way to do that. But I mean, teaching you how to be black is shifting you away from the hyphenated American syndrome that I told you about and teaching you how to be, and teaching each and every one of us and even ourselves, even myself, as I'm having interactions and conversations with people about how, how I can be more of a black person and, and put forth an effort to change the community and change the world. So when it's my time to go, whether it be soon or whether it be later down the years, I leave this earth better than what it, what where I, what I leave this earth in a better place than what it was before I came. And I just see myself doing this series, although it doesn't get the num the type of numbers that it gets, healing some wounds, opening some eyes, and propel propelling some opportunities. But anyway, I did. Melanin 9, eat the energy. I talked about our hair. I talked about certain things. Now I want to do uh, how to be black one-on-one, -on -one, black economics, or just economics, period. And give you a little insight into my uh, mindset and my objectives and everything. I'll try to keep this video under 15 minutes. I've deleted several of these videos because I want it to be perfect. Although it may not be perfect, I hope you all sit back and listen. Please like, share, subscribe before we get started. Let's jump right into it. Um... I was going to the gym. I just left the gym. Grueling workout, about an hour and 30 minutes. I was tired. Something, how crazy I was, to, uh, how just, uh, I wouldn't say crazy I was, but just how, uh, uh, I don't know what I was thinking to not bring water. I don't drink at the water fountains. You're very seldom catching drink out of any water fountain just because I know how nasty it is seeing people put their mouth and everything all in. I'm just not with that. I'm not German folk. I'm just not with that. So I went to a store. Yeah, basically, that's across the street from the gym inside my neighborhood. And um, went to go get a ball of water. Just some real quick, um, you know, so forth and so on. And inside that, I seen a family. Uh, nice family. Uh, you know, cool. Just doing their own thing. But they were speaking in their tongue. And what intrigued me about them, they were speaking in a language I had never heard before. And it was just like the grandparents, the uncles, the aunties, the brothers, uh, the sisters, the the father, the son. It was just like it was just like at least ten people. And I got my little bottle of water because I if if I can help it, I try to spend my money with black owned business. And if I just can't, then of course everybody can't, you know. But you try. I try my best too. So I had my little bottle of water, maybe eighty nine cent with tax rounded off to a dollar, dollar and a half, whatever it may be. And they had baskets full of stuff at the line. And I said to myself in that very particular moment, this is black economics one on one. This is the reason why other communities are benefiting and we're not. You gotta understand when you go to the store and buy some nine times out of ten you're not buying from a black owned business. So as I exited out, walking to through the parking lot or whatever it may be, I saw them go around to their business because they owned a business right there. And as they were putting stuff inside, going inside their business, they're saying that people who look just like them were speaking the same language as them were going inside the store as patrons to go shop. This is the revolving door. It's an old group, I don't know if you remember them, called the Stylistics. And they had a song called People Make the World Go Around. I, I, if you've never heard that song before, I definitely uh, tell you go listen to this song. I ain't gonna sing it, even though I can't sing it if y'all want me to. But I ain't gonna sing it. But um, they have a song called um, "People Make the World Go Round," and uh, you know, uh, I think it was like trash men and pick up my trash today, all because they want, on straight because they want more pay. But I make the point is, no matter economically, no matter what one specific group does, it affects another. So this system of oppression keeps happening. Because people keep feeding into it. Uh, I'm going to give you something by the prophet, the rapper, uh, uh, that I thought I think that will definitely help you. I'm just going to read a line to you. It says, 
this trend I was setting, it came to fruition. I'm assisting to push the culture forward. To all my ghost supporters, to all my ghost supporters, go support us like a local black owned grocery store. Because in the hood, nothing uh, gets passed down through, bu- through blood. It's a dub on that. We get government aid, spend it at their stores, putting their kids through college. We need balance so we can lease and own deeds in our projects. So I'm asking G's to go in their pockets. The racial economic uh, inequality, let's try to solve it. That is the most beautiful line I've probably ever heard. And that comes from the prophet Nasty Nas. If you don't know who that is, then definitely go check him out. Um, uh, he just hopped on the uh, DJ Khaled Major Keys album. And I found that, and I found that very ironic. The video just came out uh, today, actually, or a couple of hours ago, about 13, 14 hours ago. And I found that so ironic that he would take the opportunity to address the black economic situation just as I was prepping and planning to make this video. And just think about that very carefully. Look what he said. He said, we get government aid spending at their stores, putting their kids through college. So we floating in the same old boat while they're propelling. Businesses in our neighborhoods, but not giving back to the community that they're putting their business in. So we're giving them all our money without thinking a second about, let me give to a black-owned business. Because not only were they, well, well, not only are they putting their kids through college, they're giving their kids, their cousins, all the jobs. But if we went to our community, we'll be giving each other all the jobs. Our cousins all the jobs. Our friends all the jobs. So we sit up here and ask, what is the problem? How do we fix it? Uh, it was so funny because uh, I believe it was... Uh, I was watching uh, the State of the Black Union that Travis, uh, that Mr. Uh, Tavis Smiley had, and he brought in uh, 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 some people, and I can't remember who it was. I don't know, was it Mr. Dick Gregory? Was it a Minister Farrakhan? I can't remember who it was, but somebody said Martin Luther King, 50 years ago, he asked for what? And people said uh, unity, uh, jobs, and equality. We, and then some years later, who asked for so-and-so in the 72 ways he asked for Jobs and equality. Well, what are we asking for now? And they, and, and they banged on the table and said, well, what are we asking for now? The same thing. Jobs, equality, change. But the thing that we must understand, we cannot get equality through a system that does not want equality. But we ourselves must gain equality through financial wealth, financial education. And, and the basis of not just educating ourselves on finances, but actually pushing towards action. Um, banking black, eating at black owned restaurants. You may not be able to go to a black owned gas station. I found it. Uh, a YouTube channel that said thirty day black challenge where they when they when they did just spent at all black stores and they had them going to basically like Compton, California, or Crenshaw, just to get to a gas station, a black owned gas station because that's the only gas station we had or they had it is in California or that Pacific area. And um. And they made the trip just to go there because that they spent they took that thirty days to make that trip. But I make the point is this: black business, maybe other than like Baltimore, which is a, a phenomenal written piece was done. I believe I can't remember who it was by a brother who showed the economic basis and that what the percentage of black owned stores were pertaining to the population of black people. Did the numbers and the statistics behind that. There are a few places that we can go that that are have black business in abundance. Black owned grocery stores are shriveling up. There are very few left. Black banks have closed up so much there's only twenty one uh, left now, and so forth and so on. Because we're signing our death certificate, we're signing our voice away. Because this country, at a certain point, when you get to a certain level, only see one color, and that's green. And the reason why. Black and green go together so perfectly is because for them to see your blackness, they must see your green. Let me say that again. For them to see your blackness, they must see your greenness. So we're twelve. We're the twelve biggest economic power in the country. Some people say fourteen. Some people say eighteen. But let alone if us as black people in America, the thirteen percent of black people in this country, started our own nation tomorrow, we would be the thirteenth to eighteenth biggest economic power in the world because we spend but the reason why I, the system feels so um 
is so blunt and and has so much ease as they brutalize us is because at the end of the day, so no matter what they do to us, we keep feeding the monster. We keep saying, okay, well, you beating us in the street, you killing But the, our money keeps circulating, not with ourselves, but in that particular area. And that's not saying that that gives them off the hook for doing what they've done. But we must understand at the same time that for us to truly stop the monster from overtaking the whole community, we must starve it. For us, for, let me say that again because maybe y'all didn't catch that. For us to make sure that the monster, that, that blob of negative energy, the hate, the, the, the killing, for, for that to over, for, before it let, we let it overtake our community, we must starve it. Because every time that we spend a dollar with some company that's not black owned and we can find black owned business otherwhere, other places, we're feeding into that system. The system pays taxes. When we pay taxes on sale, we pay taxes to that. But not only are we paying taxes, which is a small percent, which is 8%, 10%, 12%, the other 88% is going still to a system that oppresses. So why are we still spending with them? It's so crazy because we have to make those small decisions. And not just us as talking about us as a people. But I mean just us as who want change, people who want equality, people who want change. And you see with so many communities, whether it be religion, religion, when the people get together, they buy from their own. Where you see orientation with the people who are of different, you know, whatever, they buy from each other. They even they so much that they even have a website that's dedicated to that, like you see what I'm saying? Um but when it comes to race, everybody buys from their own, basically. You go to Italians, you go participate in their local business. Uh, you can say the same thing with uh, Mexican American. You can say the same thing with uh, uh, Asian American. You say the same thing, even from sure with Hawaiian Americans, whatever you, whatever racial eth- ethnic group you can think of, European American. But when it comes to us, not only do we not buy a lot of times from our own people. It's the bit the death of black business has basically came because you can't even find a, a black owned grocery store no more. You can't even find a black owned gas station no more. And it's saddening. It's it's saddening. It's it's saddening. Whatever word you want to use for it, it's critical and it's crucial that we buy from black owned business. And I'm gonna tell you two more things. I'm leaving. I don't watch you. I don't watch TV no more. So I watch YouTube. I'm paying attention to all the YouTubers now. They're buying brand new cars. I don't watch YouTube to keep up with the Joneses. I got 14 subscribers. I ain't on their league. Of course, if I wanted to, I could plaster my face all in here, take away my pri- my personal privacy, plaster my face all in here, go hire some model uh, in L.A. somewhere because everybody's a model in L.A. I like told you if y'all want to see a story, I do a story time about that. But I can go find a model, whatever, and go do a crazy thumbnail. And go get that, go do a little fake prank and get a hundred thousand subscribers easy. Some people get a hundred thousand subscribers after doing sixty videos. I've done a hundred and twenty eight videos, I believe, probably a hundred and twenty five of those which are public, and I'm still fighting just to keep fourteen subscribers. If somebody keeps subscribing and unsubscribing, I don't know what that's about. Um, but anyway, so I can't keep over the Jones, but I just watch because I don't watch regular TV no more. And I'm seeing brothers and, and people and sisters, whoever it may be, buying brand new cars brand new houses, going to the barbershop every week, every two weeks. So, But the um, sad part is when they go to the barbershop, they're not even going to a black-owned barbershop, let alone they're not even going to a black barber. I believe it was, oh, it was for uh, y'all entertainment who did, uh, what's it called, for y'all, uh, for y'all entertainment. They got, over 100, uh, they got over a million subscribers, the two brothers out of uh, Jamaica or out of Canada or whatever. And, um, he said, oh, yeah, I'm an ethnic barber at Supercuts. I thought that was a funny joke because, you see, they're not even, not even Supercuts, but they just period. They ain't even going to black-owned barbershop no more. When they're buying all, everybody owns the car season now, everybody buying a brand-new car on YouTube, nobody's going to a black-owned dealership, let alone a black-owned salesperson to get them that commission. When they're buying a house, they're not even going to a black-owned real estate agent for that person to get that commission. So we as black people must not only let the world, we not only help the world go around, but we must help our communities go around. And we're stagnant, still asking for something for the same 50 years because our finances are not going around. They're going around and out the door. I think it said inside of certain communities, money stays inside the community seven days, three days, whatever it may be. The black dollar stays in the black community, I think they said less than two, 
less than three hours. That's sad to think about. I told you after the after the march thing, I said, what's going to happen? After we go to the march, after we march and protest, you're going to be hungry. You're going to be thirsty. You go to you go to a business that don't support black people and actually goes as far as to be uh, somebody who goes against the system, profits off the privatization of the prison system, buys stocks and privatization of the prison system. That whole march you just did for whatever cause it is, just completely just wiped everything out. That's like that's like a women's rights group going to go march and then they go eat at a restaurant that oppresses women that that uh the owner comes out and say he's against women's suffrage he's against women having the right to do whatever it may be that's like you going to go eat and saying well okay i'm against child labor laws but then you go buy from these companies i'm, I'm not gonna name any because i get sued and they had a little logo up here on the little sh- on the little shirt but some child out there in some foreign land, in, in some kind of sweatshop or some kind of child labor laws that are awful, making these clothes. Your every that little protest that you did is not anything if we can't back it up with action. That's the point I make. So again, I say all this. It all falls. And that don't all fall upon us. The the not the oppression, but the the basis to try to bring change and equality in America for our communities falls upon us, because only we can bring that change. Now it gets to the point now, and this is my solution. I told you it was going to be on 15 minutes. I lied. It's, on, it's over 20 minutes now. I tried to keep my promises, but it didn't happen. I apologize. Every Friday or every Saturday, what I try to do, every Sunday, but just the weekend, either Thursday, thir- I consider the weekend Thursday at 5 o'clock. That's just me because, you know, that's by the time everybody gets off. You know, everybody's chilled. Everybody's in a good mood. You know, even though you nine ten ten got to go to work on Friday, unfortunately, Fridays are just a lot smoother for me. I don't know why. It just is. Um, but, um, either between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, you need to be going to spend at least $10 with a black owned business, $5 with a black owned business. Because by doing this, we are supporting black owned business, but so much that black owned business has become obsolete in black America. There are few black owned businesses left. So we have to almost during there go online to go purchase something from a black owned business. And we can't always get it. But the difference is, that opportunity, that window is there. You may not always have a reason to purchase something, but you can say, okay, well, let me go eat at, if I'm hungry, let me go eat at a black-owned restaurant. I want to go out with my lady, you know, whatever I want to take out to eat. You can find a black-owned restaurant. If you're going to take 30 minutes to travel or 30 minutes to drive or whatever, nine to the time, you're going out to eat, you're not just going to go to the restaurant that's two minutes away from your house. If you're legitimately saying, let me, if I'm going out on a date or let me freshen up, you're legitimately going to drive 20 minutes to go somewhere unless, you know, some people don't, but I just find that, you know, the kind of ideal thing is to drive at least 10, 15 minutes, you know, from somewhere or try to find somewhere close and go Google black owned business in this area. And it may not always come true. A lot of times you find a certain sometimes don't be a black owned restaurant, but a lot of times it does. You just look for them. So you can go say that uh, if you think about getting a birthday present, think two months ahead of time what you're going to get. I'm, as I'm making this video is now the ninth to 10th. 2016, which means I made this video past 12 o'clock. So it's already the next morning, technically. Even though I don't consider the next morning to sunrise, but it's already the next morning. Um, I'm thinking, like, this Christmas coming up. I got stuff I got to get family right now. So as this is the 9-9 right now, I'm going to get up tomorrow. Even if it's nothing but $25, I'm going to go buy a black-owned, I'm going to go to a black-owned business, go buy a black-owned card with, with uh, black dancing Santa Claus on there saying Merry Christmas. All right, that car is $10. Then I'm going to go find something cheap, a little coffee mug. That's $10. Shipping is $5. It's $15. I need to spend $25 on a mug and a car. Boom, I'm going to say happy birthday, give it to a coworker, whatever. You see what I'm saying? I make that point is you're already going to get them a gift. You're going to go to the mall or something and get them a gift. You're going to go to a bookstore. You're going to go to a, a, a whatever and get them a gift. Well, why not get them a gift? that you can support i'm seeing people right now already getting halloween costumes personally i don't i don't do halloween that's just not my thing spiritually you know whatever that's just not my thing it doesn't go against any principle just personally i don't fall for i don't like that kind of stuff but if you're going to get your child a halloween costume it's nine it's the ninth to tenth halloween's not for two months why are you buying them halloween costumes right now from the store 
then you can, if you got that much time to go wait two months ahead of time to go take them to trunk or treat, because I know a lot of churches are doing like trunk or treat now, which I like. I don't like that other stuff because it's just too dangerous at any streets, especially with them clowns and everything happening over there in uh, North Carolina. But um, everybody's doing trunk or treat for the churches. Okay, then, well, if you're going to get your child a costume, you got two months ahead of time. Why not searching for a black owned business that does uh, uh, children's costumes, that do children's whatever? Two months ahead of time, it's going to be shipped in two, three weeks by the time Halloween gets there. You'll have it. Instead of going to your big box store, supporting the system that's oppressing us, you're not only helping your people, but you're still enjoying yourself. You don't have to take any enjoyment away. It's not going to discount you. You're not going to melt. You're not going to burn. You're not going to feel bad if you buy from a black owned business. You're going to feel good. So I just make that point about black economics. It takes me all back to the people I saw in the store. They went and spent money to support a system. Everything in their basket came from a non-black owned company, which I don't expect them to because we don't preach black economics. We don't even hold those accountable who have stores in our neighborhood to support black people or to support black owned business. So much now that the, the death of black business that you go up the street in a black community and it's hard to find a black owned business. You may find a restaurant here. You may find whatever, but you're going to find McDonald's. You're going to find Chipotle. You're going to find Wendy's. You're going to find uh, 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 McDonald's, Burger King. You're going to find all these companies. You're going to find Walmart. Uh, uh, you're going to find, uh, uh, I don't know who else, but you're going to find some clothing stores, whatever it may be. You're going to find a mall. You go inside the mall. Probably not any black-owned business in there. So I make the point is this. We support it. We don't hold anybody accountable. And then now, as we get to the base of trying to find equality, the only people that we can hold accountable and actually know to be accountable and to actually be able to back our actions up is ourselves. So as you go out there tomorrow and you go to the mall again, and like I told you, if you if you go into the mall after all this stuff and happened, that's on you. But if you go to the mall, whatever you spent, whatever you plan on spending in the mall, I don't care if it's twenty dollars, I don't care if it's forty dollars, you need to spend half of that with a black owned business, and a tenth of that with a black owned business. Even if you say, Well, I just want to do it once a month. Well then save ten percent of whatever you're gonna spend. Say, well instead of me buying uh, 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 a shirt uh, a t-shirt that's thirty dollars at the mall. Let me go find a t-shirt here. I don't need it right now, but I want one. I know I'm going to this party so and so later on, so I just want it and have it. You can do some stuff to support black owned business. So just remember just to support black owned business. Black economics. Like the stylist has said and it was tried and true. Song over forty years ago saying people make the world go round. Black people we make the world go round because of economic power. But even above that and beyond that and even greater than that, we make our communities go around. So if we continue to buy black, we have no, if we if we start buying black, or at least if you're already doing it like I am, if we continue to buy black, our, our communities will no longer be stagnant. And we will no longer be asking for equality, but actually living. We'll be able to put our children in schools. We'll be able to do all these things and take care of certain things. Uh, uh, a situation where HBCU got into a terrible financial situation. They had them going to the state asking for money. The state said, okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, so for, I don't know what state it was or what city it was. Somebody just sent me a, a article and told me to read it. Cause they keep up, they like, they have like a, they have a thing where they do like HBC news, HBCU news, uh, feeds or whatever. And they sent it to me and told me, read this. And so much, they were in so much uh, financial trouble that they had to ask the state and, or the city and the city said, okay, we'll fund it, but you have to give us all your property if you don't pay us back in the next year and a half. Well, instead of them going to that, they should be able to come to us and say, black community, we need your help. We need y'all support. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody gives a dollar each. Boom. They not only take care of whatever needs to be taken care of, but they have a surplus money. That's how the black community needs to be running because that's how every other community needs to be running. We can act, we, we, we can ask for equality, but we must actually bring equality and make sure that we get equality. So peace and men and blessing. This is the honest to God truth. I'm keeping it real. If you hate it, love it, like it, whatever, please give it a big thumbs up. If not, give it a big thumbs down. I don't care either way. Peace and men and blessing each and every one of y'all. I hope y'all y'all stay safe, protected, and have much peace and power as you continue to be a melanated person in America. I'm on to the next one.